I know some of us have those few games we keep top of mind whenever the time may come to recommend to our friends when they're searching for a new experience. This video actually stemmed from me trying to give some more of my casual gamer friends some suggestions on some games they should try, and as some of us get older, we find ourselves with more responsibilities and less free time. Sometimes, you want a game that's going to check the right boxes and leave you satisfied every time you put down the controller, and I really wanted an opportunity to talk about some of these games on the channel, so I'll be sharing three that really stood out to me in the past few years, and be sure to comment with your own three because I always like to know what you guys are interested in, and if you want to see a part two to this video because there are definitely more than three we can discuss, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel for more gaming content like this, and let's get right into it. Ghost of Tsushima is a perfect example of a game elevated by its world and gameplay, supplemented by a fine narrative. The world and gameplay are truly at the forefront of this experience, and before we discuss that, let me provide you with some story exposition. Ghost of Tsushima is a samurai tale divided into three separate acts. Set in 1274, you play as Jin Sakai, one of the last remaining samurai. Now Jin was raised by his uncle, who's a prominent figure in the story, Lord Shimura, and he is the one who taught him the samurai code, and it's always been engraved in him ever since he was a young kid. Unfortunately for Jin and his uncle, shit hits the fan when the Mongol armies invade their homeland, so of course they try to protect themselves and repel the attack with soldiers all across the beach. And here's when we're first introduced to the main villain of the story, Koton Khan, and his plan is to seize Tsushima and amass his forces in preparation for a full-scale attack on Japan, and of course, it's your job to protect your homeland, balancing the way of life as a samurai while also learning new techniques to make sure that you can smartly and effectively succeed in your mission. Now that i provided a bit of the story's exposition, I want to highlight what really stood out to me during my time playing this game. First of all, this world is absolutely gorgeous, both stylistically and graphically. As you travel, you might just find yourself taking in an extra second or two to really soak in the environment and just really appreciate how really good it looks. It's also really unique how this game guides you to each of your landmarks that you have marked on the map and it's really through the wind so if you're playing this on PS5 and you scroll up on the touchpad, it, the wind will guide you to the general direction of your landmark so I thought that was a really cool way to not just have big markers all over the place and now is also a good time to mention that this game is also coming out to PC, I believe at the end of May. So if you want a, better, a little bit better experience in terms of performance and gameplay, you might want to wait for that to come out on Steam. But that's just always an option. The PS5 version honestly plays really good and the load times are super fast. My taste for combat in a game really just depend on the mood that I'm in. And sometimes I don't mind a game with the more hack and slashy button mashing gameplay. But most of the time, I do appreciate a game with a more tactical and timing based combat. And now Ghost of Tsushima falls kind of in the middle of that spectrum where the combat is or can be unforgiving at times, but just difficult enough to where you need to be a little bit more patient in your approach. Your actions feel weighty at times, but also quick and precise like a samurai. Who would have thought? I also really like the part where you could like stand off so when you approach like a Mongol base, you can get your quick one with one of them and it gives you an opportunity to refresh all your health and if you miss or strike too soon, then you're screwed for an encounter and you just get jumped. So I thought that was just a really cool addition in my opinion. Overall though, if this is a game that's been on your mind or if you've been on the edge of trying to make that purchase, I really think you will find yourself having a good time with this game, whether you just want to run through the story or see everything that it has to offer. Sometimes, a game experience doesn't need to be a sprawling open world or have the most realistic graphics, but a brief one where the gameplay is at the focus can really do the job. And that's exactly what Sifu is. Let me provide you with the plot of the game. Your father Yang is a martial arts master and on a cold rainy day, his old exiled students return to the dojo to extract their revenge on their former sensei. And unfortunately, they succeed and you bear witness to this just as a kid. The old students find you and they actually go and kill you, but due to this old ancient talisman that you have, you're able to survive. The talisman is at the core of this gameplay because each time you die, you're aged up instead and you're able to come back to life. 
I found this to be a real cool premise and it provided a real challenge trying to make it to the end of the game as young as possible because as you do get older you eventually do lose the game after you die past I believe like 80 and you also lose the ability to access any of the abilities that you would have gotten at a younger age because they get blocked off as you you know die more. With that little background out the way, I like to mention earlier that the combat is truly the highlight of Sifu, and there's a lot of nuance to it as, you know, the timing of your blocks, which way to evade is crucial to your survival, but it's one of those games that truly brings out the experience of being a true martial arts master. Like, it feels like one big Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan movies you they'd always have on TV back in the days. Sifu has five main maps or areas that you traverse through to defeat various henchmen until you eventually make it to the final boss, one of those former students. There are a variety of enemy types and weapons and the bosses are all unique in their combat styles. And if you've never played this game before, I'll let you know that you can also take the high road in this game and spare the lives of each former student for a secret ending, but that was a little bit difficult for me to achieve, but I'm just letting you all know. Aside from being a great game, I also wanted to highlight it that it's specifically in this video, it was a game that was recently added to the PlayStation's Extra tier, and it's an overall a game that you can find, you know, relatively cheap on sales. And additionally, if you have the PC version like me, there's many mods that you can get on top of this game, as you all have been probably wondering, how the heck am I Batman and Madara? Like, it's just a PC skin, and overall, these are the little things that can really make this game more enjoyable in, you know, small ways. The game also has its own set of built-in modifiers that change in the gameplay, so there's many ways that you can increase the replayability. If the game has piqued your interest, I suggest that next time, you know, you know, wait for it to go on sale, but I suggest you pick it up because it'll definitely be worth it and you'll enjoy your time with it. Now this is probably not a shocker to many of you all out there, but I haven't talked about Red Dead Redemption 2 on this channel and I'll find every opportunity I can to talk about it because this is a complete gaming experience, like it has it all. Whether it be story, graphics, gameplay, like Red Dead Redemption 2 is the full package. If you've not played this game like at all, number one, you know, what are you doing man? This is, this is the game that you should be playing. And number two, this is a prequel to the 2010 Red Dead Redemption. So you can play it without having played that one. Although that one was also just recently uh, released on the current and next generation of consoles. For a little story context, you play as Arthur Morgan, who's a member of the Dutch Vanderlyn gang. And after a botch heist, you and your gang find yourselves having to adapt to the ever-changing times that are outgrowing the Wild West and any antics that come with it. I can't recall a game outside of this series that truly gives you such a full experience of being a cowboy and living in the late 1800s as America is making its push to, you know, becoming a fully industrialized nation and the time and setting really make for a true authentic experience. It also allows you to be on either extremes of the law, you know, explore the open frontier, hunt, collect bounties, hogtie people. It's what you can expect from a cowboy experience. The story is full of fun and interesting characters and even twists and betrayals. There's not much more I can say about this game. You know, me personally, I really don't go to replay games that are such large and expansive, you know, experiences, but this is one that I've played through twice already and it's a reason that it's one of the most highly regarded games of all time. If you have a computer, you know, that's capable enough of playing this game, I guarantee you it is no doubt the best way to play it. Unfortunately, since there are no current gen versions of this game, it's all the PS4 version, no updates. But no matter how you play it, it's going to be one of those, it's going to be definitely one of the best gaming experiences that you can have. But that's going to wrap up this video, everyone. Which of these games have you played or enjoyed the most? And what are some of your own video game suggestions? Share them in the comments down below. I really just enjoy discussing my experiences and hearing from you all. So be sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.